Manet's painting from 1881-82, Girl at the Bar of the Folie Berger. And this was a, a bar in Paris. It was sort of a nightclub. A More than a bar. A yeah. expensive nightclub. Yeah. And so it was sort of frequented by the upper middle class in Paris. And it had all sorts of amazing things going on. Where is this painting now? Is it's it actually in the Courtauld uh, Art Gallery in London. Oh, it's in London. Yeah. So I haven't seen it. Only I've only seen reproductions of it. And like most people listening to this, many reproductions. But this is the first time that I ever noticed those two pair of shoes <laughs> kind of hanging down from the <laughs> upper, upper left-hand left corner of the painting. What is going on? They're connected to legs. And, um, and presumably a body above that. And if you look really closely, can you see that they're standing on a trapeze? Yes. It looks like an acrobat. This and was that's a circus. What it was. Yes. It was a circus. So Good. we're seeing through the reflection of a mirror. Ah, well, this is a complicated moment. This is a painting that's really about seeing and vision and light in so many ways. And of course, Paris at this moment and so social and political issues. But at first, I think when you look at this painting, it seems as if you're seeing in back of her this sort of deep space. But if you look very closely, right around her her wrist, you'll see uh, the, the bottom of the gold frame that, that separates the mirror that we're actually looking at. So what those so those legs that are hanging there in the upper left of the painting are in fact in back of us. Right. As and it is it's an acrobat. So it's an acrobat, so it's a spectacle going on in back of us. I, and I think actually in the Folies Berger from what I've read, there are several spectacles going on at once. So she's looking at me, isn't she? But how come she's looking at this other guy also? That's the that's the problem because when you first look at the painting, it looks as though we are approaching her. We're presumably the male the consumer here going and purchasing a glass of wine or a drink from her. And we seem to be at some distance from her, and her look and her posture seem a little bit distant. And there's a kind of ambivalence in her expression. But when we look at the reflection, it seems different, right? More collapsed, I think. They well, the closer. reflection, it looks somehow more engaged. She looks as though she's slightly maybe even bent towards the man. And the man when, is much closer. And the man is much closer. Yeah. But when she looks at us, there's a certain vacancy in her eyes. Where right. does that come from? Well, art historians have spent a lot of time <laughs> trying to figure this out. Why the discrepancy so that there's a kind of presumed intimacy that seems to be in the reflection between the man and woman, perhaps the implication of a flirtation going on, you know, a kind of sexually available working class woman in Paris in the 1880s, um, who certainly would have had a, a kind of sense of sexual availability compared to the sort of upper, you know, middle class women who would have been more sheltered away, versus so that, that intimacy versus the kind of distance that we feel and that kind of vacancy in her in her face is one the way that the artist feels about the woman and the other a kind of wish about her. You know, I, I think these are some of the ideas people have had. And also whose perspective we're holding. Are we holding our sympathy with her or with him? Um, as, as the viewer, as you had mentioned just a moment ago, it almost seems as if we are that viewer, we embody that viewer, and he is us as the consumer of this painting, as the consumer of the drink, perhaps as the consumer of her. But you were speaking of ambiguity or a kind of, um, a kind of openness of the way in which we interpret her face and her, her facial features and her expression. If you really look at that face, mm -hmm. um, I think there's really the possibility of seeing a kind of intense, um, actually a kind of sadness there. Um, yeah. There's a kind of openness to those eyes and a kind of remorse mm -hmm. um, that is, I think, very affecting, really, and, and really quite powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, I mean, many, I mean, just as we're looking at this detail for a moment, just look at the handling of the paint. It's yeah. just incredible. Look at, for instance, the locket um, or whatever she's got on, on her choker mm -hmm. there um, and the openness of that. It reminds me of his still lives. But that, that kind of open handling and almost liquid handling of the paint mm -hmm. exists within her eyes as well and almost makes me feel like she, her eyes are almost welling glazed up. Glazed over with Yeah, tears glazed or over or or very close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is actually a sketch for the Bart, the Folies Berger, and that seems to show a very different perspective that seems a little bit more true in some way because in this case, the man and the woman do have a kind of distance that does seem to match our experience of her if, if we are 
the man in the painting reflected back, the space seems to make sense more here than it does. What do you think? Uh, no, absolutely. But uh, there's no way that we can insinuate ourselves in this painting as, as we can in the other painting. Yeah. In the other painting, I actually feel jealous of the man. I feel <laughs> that he's taking my space. Mm -hmm. So you're almost in line in back of him. Is that is that it? And you want to occupy the space right. that he occupies. Right. It feels like. Or how come he gets to be? How close come to he her? gets to be close ah. to her? Exactly. And of course, all of this is happening. This sort of intense relationship that takes place between her, him, and the viewer, whether or not they're compressed, they're they're collapsed or not. And then, of course, this sort of wild, sort of sensuous environment in which right. all of this With is wine taking place. Wine and fruit and flowers. Is there the any table. symbolism right. of the fruit and flowers in this at all? Well, a new you know, reason why he chose Cezanne will take it and certainly make symbolism out of it very, very <laughs> quickly. Um, art historians haven't, I don't think, in my reading, not um, have not really pushed, pushed that. Um, the, there's all this marvelous stuff going on in the background besides the acrobat. I mean, if you look closely, there's, you know, there's a woman with binoculars, yeah. very well dressed in the background, sort of leaning over and peering around at people. And, and think about what you just said for a moment. A you know, woman you, looking. Well, a woman looking, but a woman looking through binoculars that really focuses attention. But of course, we're seeing all of this as a reflection. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the reflectivity of the mirror is just a perfect metaphor in, in many ways for what Manet is. Is it what he's trying to do or what he's trying to break away from? Mm -hmm. In other words, really is right, Manet... that perspective. That's right. Is, right. Ma is Manet concerned with the accuracy and the sort of legitimacy of the reflectivity of right. the canvas? Well, or is he yes. more interested in the destruction and manipulation? Well, clearly more interested in the destruction and manipulation. You know, I mean, because of the research that's on the Getty Museum's website, it's it's actually pretty clear that he's really playing with perspective. In a very conscious way. And, and distorting the perspective. And it seems from recent research that, in fact, the male viewer is that we see reflected is actually just out of our view over to the left. And in fact, we're viewing this over from the right. And the, and the combination of those two perspectives actually bring those two figures together in, that in right the reflect, corner, but right. only in the reflection, in a, in a way that is wonderfully staged and constructed. Yeah. Well, in a way, he's saying that the mirror is not this thing that's represented the truth, the sort of metaphor for, for truth. For so long. Right? This, that paintings are a mirror of the visual world. Here he's he's taking that mirror and saying no mirror mirrors are, are false mirrors are are just as constructed, in a way as everything else based on our point of view. Think about that in terms of the nineteenth century. Think of that in terms of the new ubiquity of photography, mm -hmm. um, and That's from right. and from the perspective of a painter, mm -hmm. um, that you have this this ability to draw nature accurately mm -hmm. or perhaps not so much. Right. It's a, it's and also just you know, ideas of the pursuit, pursuit of truth, you know, and what exactly that constitutes truth the truth, yeah. and is there a truth yeah. outside of subjectivity? So the truth is perhaps this larger thing that is it, Manet's understanding of the social dynamics of this era. The emotional moment here, you know, as of well this kind as of intense, the light and the color. You know, and, feeling yeah. about this woman in this, you know, I mean, I think that's what that playing with that perspective does. It brings that sort of emotional issue that you picked up on of jealousy and intimacy and anxiety even um, that wouldn't be there I think if the perspective hadn't and those been are all feelings up. and they're real fleeting uh, feelings but they're fleeting feelings ones that you would almost lose uh, as you progress through this space just as the light is fleeting just mm -hmm. as the circus acts are fleeting right. just in a sense as Paris was fleeting at right. this moment exactly and Manet captures that it's always what he's doing right is capturing these moments that this that happened in, in the you know passing second you know what what is going on you so know, what a, are the feelings so a kind of questioning what's happening and a kind of openness of, to meaning an openness to meaning yeah. and yet a kind of emotional intensity at the same time it's really an incredible painting isn't it it is there's the 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 last thing that we put up was this little picture of the bar at the Follies Bear here. Well, it's a poster, really, an advertisement. Yes. And what's so wonderful, in the bottom right corner is um, a scene that's not so different from what Manet actually paints. And it, and this uh, this poster existed just a few years before the painting was made in the, in the uh, mid to late 1870s. Yeah, and it gives us an idea of the kind of 
sexualized, I think, flirtatious vibe of the Yeah, no, that's right. So this was a place where the commodity of sexuality could, mm -hmm. could really um, s sort of be openly dealt with in some way, Yeah. at least for 19th century culture. Yeah.